who are involved in it. Some of those exercises, some of those after action reports are not going to be published and not going to be made public. It's like giving our enemies a playbook of how we're going to operate and what our weaknesses are. Uh, the right people have those. Uh, what we at the end of the day, we end up with a three or four hundred page document that goes every detail of exactly what happened. And, uh, and that's not going to be published. We're going to keep that uh, close hold. Now, the, way, uh, the, the, uh, the reason he said to speak up is because I wear hearing aids and I can't hear a darn thing, so you really got to speak up. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and we'll have you direct that to Christina, his press secretary. All right, well, thank you, folks. All right, a couple of folks may or may not have known about Neil Goldschmidt and his relationship with a 14 year old. Here's my question the county chair. Go ahead. The, uh, the mayor is responsible for directing the evacuation of the city and that um, we will use those resources we need to ensure a safe evacuation. Um, the Portland Police Bureau can't do that by themselves. Uh, we've called in our regional partners from other police agencies and from the state and that um, if necessary, uh, other resources from the federal government. Uh, the whole idea isn't to uh, enforce the law, it's to safely evacuate people. The, uh, there's a system called uh, EMAC, Emergency Management Assistance Compact, that all 50 states are, are participants in, where we can very quickly move resources from one state to another, including National Guard units if we have to do that. It's a, a very efficient system, it works very well. And uh, if there's a need in a particular state, and we know another state has that, all the government has to do is pick up the phone and call that. And we can assist with that also. What we did in this particular event with Guam, uh, with, with here in, in Oregon, and also in Phoenix, uh, in Arizona, is uh, the president did a, an emergency declaration, uh, not even waiting for the governor uh, to apply for that. So they didn't have to go through all that paperwork. We did a, a disaster declaration right away. That allowed FEMA and the rest of the federal agencies to move uh, equipment in and people in very quickly without uh, having to worry about a declaration being done. Uh, so that, uh, and that's what would happen in a disaster like this. Uh, back to your, the other question over there about the, about the president's ability to, to, uh, to nationalize it, to federalize the National Guard. Uh, that would only be in a very, very extreme event when there, there was no decision-making capability at the state or the local. The decision has to make, uh, be made about whether to evacuate or not evacuate the city. In this situation, it's not necessarily to evacuate, but keep people at home. So there's two different ways the military is training, how to move populations. They've been doing this through Top Off 3, which have been in at a very long, detailed report, which includes vaccinations. There's also some information we've received about vaccinations being involved in the drill in Phoenix, Arizona. By the way, in Phoenix and uh, Guam is where the other two locations are in Top Off 4. It's not just Portland. It involves 15,000 people altogether, 4,000 here locally in Portland. Uh, so my point is this, in this situation it's about uh, your own personal shelter, what you have individually. That's why you have to actually get prepared, which is our talk next week about what your suggestions and ideas are for forming a group here based of course on peace, not trying to engineer a war on the government. Um, you know, one of the roles of the mayor uh, is to be the, the public face of this, and so as a result, um, I've already on some of the, the uh, closed networks been, uh, had press conferences about this issue. Um, you know, the, it's perfectly natural for folks to be afraid, but what we have to do is give them the tools uh, they need in order to sort of restore their lives, but also make sure that uh, we restore basic services as soon as possible. 
you know, there's the response to the event and there's the recovery. You can see uh, with Katrina in uh, New Orleans where the recovery has been very protracted and long. Um, we expect that we would have the same thing here in, a, in the event of a, a dirty bomb. So uh, that would require the resources of not just the city, but the state and the federal government. And the commitment that we've had is that they'll be there when we need them. The, when I went to the hospital this morning and talked to both of the doctors running that exercise, they said they did have enough medication there for the particular type of radioactive material. Uh, a lot of the patients brought in uh, had not been contaminated. A lot of them have. Uh, they were decontaminated and given medicine. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, I don't know that the stockpile has arrived yet, arrived yet or if it's even been asked for. Uh, so, but we do have plenty in the national stockpile, and this particular hospital had enough to deal with all the patients that they were brought to them. Right, thank you, folks. And good questions, folks. Thank you very much. Now, I like how they all kind of are escorted by uh, NORTHCOM, NORAD, the military, the guys there down there on the ground that work directly for the DOD. Now, from here, we're going to Legacy Emanuel, but before we do that, we're going to have to pause and talk with Ginny just a little bit. Well, as you can see, it's all very orchestrated and it's a it's a staged event uh, we expected that but didn't you think that it was interesting how all of the public speakers the mayor and the governor they they followed a script and we heard it a lot because of seeing these events all through the week and we've heard this script about the reason top off three information has not come out is because we don't want the bad guys to see it and this reasoning we've heard governor Kulongoski say that too two or three times, I'm not sure. You've been watching this all week long. And uh, I just think it's interesting that the, the officials have all, they all seem to be playing off of a script as well. And it's, uh, it, it just it gives me a feeling that um, they're being prepared in, in, in a way for the next, for the real thing. We, we want our officials to be prepared. Mm -hmm. we're, we're for that. We want preparation and uh, safety for the citizens. But what, w what we think is odd, I think Alex and I have talked about this this week, is that the, the total lack of citizen involvement in this entire week, it's just the officials and the, the responders that have been preparing, not any of us yeah. uh, for, for this disaster, unless we were one of the play actors. A lot of people have been concerned, obviously, as you are, about a false mm -hmm. flag. Of course, we know that's likely considering that they say it's not a matter of if, but when. And we understand a little bit more about 9-11 than your average Joe or Jane. But it's fairly well known um, about the drills that took place on that day and this exactly. accidental occurrence of them going live. The strange thing about it is uh, even beyond the level of a false flag in martial law, there's something else going on with the economy not doing too well, the dollar plummeting, oil and gas at an all-time high. The situation in the news breaking right now with Dalai Lama, China, and the United States, and the tension over that. Uh, it's very serious because the likelihood of World War III, whether a real, genuine war against each other or manufactured by something we don't fully understand, is beyond me. But we do know there are multiple drills going on. Pacific Shield 2007. And these are some keywords for you to Google and look up for yourself. And they're all taking place in the same week. Operation Peace Mission 2007 isn't this week, but it took place last month involving the Chinese and the Russians in a joint unified effort where the United States was a threat. Vigilant Shield 2008 is in response to a possible Chinese-Russian attack on the United States. We have the permanent patrolling uh, of the nuclear bombers that the Russians have now made permanent, according to Putin. There are many things going on in today's news. The Japanese have just deployed F-16s to possibly deal with an invasion by China. And we have a couple things going on involving Singapore, the Philippines. Ironically, there's also an exercise involving both the United States and Russia as well. So we have also domestic martial law exercises. We have DHS doing mock martial law type trial runs in Alabama with little kids, but you also have the global ones that are beyond the U.S. Precisely, and uh, just to add one more drill to, uh, this came up today, uh, a drill that is being conducted in Texas and has now apparently led to a real explosion at a Texas uh, ga uh, oil refinery in Port Houston, or uh, Port Arthur, mm -hmm. Texas. 
And I just um, encourage everyone to Google that and find out about it because a, a real, real gas line explosion has happened today. But what you won't hear in the news is that there was a drill involving a live, some sort of live drilling, uh, exercising about an explosion at a refinery. Mm -hmm. So, gosh, another coincidence, Alex. How can it be? Well, we don't want to live in the problem. We want to live in the solution. If you have suggestions about groups, about sustainability, if you have suggestions about things you might want to get or things that you can use to barter with, or also you want to talk about stirring up a town hall where you can talk about making political change right here on the local level because now is the time, now that Potter is stepping down, how convenient, at the right time. That is next week's show. Now we're going to go back to the clip, uh, the uh, barrage of footage that I collected from uh, this year's Top Off 4 exercise. He's acting, he's pretending that he's going through some sort of a seizure. This is how morbid and bizarre this exercise really was. If only I had another hour to talk to you about all the things I learned about psychology. Um, the showers on the other side of that curtain, showers over there. One side is male, one side is female. Down the middle here is for people who are non-ambulatory, so they go through on the backboard. And, the, and those uh, red coils have water coming out with soap, mild soap. So that knocks down the radioactive particles from their bodies. are evaluated and, de and depending upon what their condition is they might be admitted to the hospital they may be just you know sent home those two tents over there with the walk what over there what capacity could you handle here do you think? Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't know I mean this is obviously just a demo this is hundreds uh -huh. we could process hundreds of patients okay I, I'm, I'm sure it's over 100 an hour Wow. People get used to the idea of the checkpoint in this exercise. There were many checkpoints. I went through several hundred checkpoints. I've spoken with several hundred people since Monday. And quite frankly, I'm uh, a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. And it was very interesting on the topic of psychology to learn about how people in the mainstream media react to situations like this. They know intuitively what questions not to ask. And a lot of people in the media don't even know about the drills. I was uh, filming alongside uh, people from CNN alongside people from Coin6, and it was almost gang-like mentality uh, as each different media person and different um, uh, Department of Homeland Security official slowly at some point asked me who I'm with because I didn't have a big fat logo uh, of Coin6 or NBC uh, or Fox News uh, on my jacket. So they were curious where I was from and who I was reporting for. And so I got used to that question. I got asked it about a hundred different times. The one person who seemed to be the most concerned out of anybody was the lady that you just saw walking me through the RDD. And uh, because she didn't know about PCM, she was kind of convinced that it didn't exist, even though it's down the street. Now we'll go back to the clip. Top off full scale exercise here in Oregon, Monday morning at 0700 hours. Uh, the RDD uh, device, the Simulated device uh, went off and detonated at 9:06 uh, Pacific time yesterday. We had a uh, the full-scale response took place down at Portland International Raceway. Uh, that response is ongoing, and you can see uh, from the slides behind me that the federal, state, local governments are going to focus on uh, the incident response, the acute incident response day, certainly the remediation issues, uh, public information. What are we telling our citizens? Should we evacuate? Shelter in place? Uh, how are you giving supplies and resources to those people who need to stay in place? We'll certainly have interactions today between the uh, city, the county, and the state, and the federal government. Uh, yesterday, the governor was talking about something happening in the hypothetical drill and having to, this is a sort of succession of constitutional 